ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ضل غوا وانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا ان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وان خير الامور عوازمها والشر الامور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل في كتاب الكريم بعد الله بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق دقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala we praise him we seek his assistance and to him and only him do we turn in repentance we seek the forgiveness in Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our actions and whom so Allah guides none can mislead and whoever is led astray there is no guide for him and we all testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala. and we all testify that Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is the final and beloved messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala. <coughs> My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to Yom Al-Jum'ah. Welcome to Yom Al-Jum'ah, the, the best day of the week that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala has chosen for us, for Islam and for the Muslimin. On this 26th day of Safar, 1441 years, after the Hijrah of beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I wanted to start off our topic today, because we're here in the U.S., alhamdulillah, right? And many of us who have migrated, and some of us were born here. But many of us that have migrated here, many of our parents, our grandparents, and others that have migrated here, they've come here for certain reasons. And now, alhamdulillah, we have money. We have some type of security. We think economy is extremely important. And we think that the you know job security, the job market, the, to the retirement accounts that we have here, all of the things, the materialistic possessions that we have and the materialistic possessions that we're constantly running after, we have it here. We have it here, alhamdulillah. But the question is, are we happy? Are we content? Are we happy with the money that we're making here? We're so busy and it's like a machine running up and down, left and right, day and night, running like a machine, running constantly after the money, runs constantly after the property, running constantly after something materialistic that we're going to be able to gain in this world. That has made us being disconnected <laughs> with Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala. And it takes us away from the Quran Majeed. And it takes us away from the things that are most important. Because I can sum up the khutbah in two minutes. The entire reason why we've been created. There is no reason for mankind and jinn to be created other except for only to worship Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala. That is the entire reason for our existence and everything else is a, is a test. Everything else is a test. And people ask all the time, young kids especially, because they're not getting it. Because they're not in a Muslim environment. Because they're not those restrictions that we have in our countries. They're not getting it. A lot of the kids, they just don't understand. They, the questions that they ask, and I was in a, a couple of weeks ago, I was with some kids sitting there and giving him that were giving him a lecture, trying to give you know, give him like one of those Friday night halakha sessions, and one of the men, not one, just did several kids asked me this question: What is the purpose when Allah knows what is going to happen to us? Why do we have to do what we do? Why do we have to worship Allah Subhanahu Jalla wa Taala when He knows I'm going to be? He already wrote the book. He knows if I'm in the heaven or if I'm in the hell. 
He knows. Why? Why should I do anything? So you have to answer these questions for these people. Why? Because they are rooted in this society, in this world, with electronic media, with a, these electronic sources. These are the things that they think about. And the question is very, very, very simple, but very complex to explain. You know why? Because we have to go and try to circle back to the beginning of creation. To the beginning of creation, creation of mankind. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announced, 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 and he said, we're going to have a khalifa on the earth. He said it to the angel. <coughs> they were going to have a khalifa. Do you know who's the most excited person or the excited being at that time when Allah made that announcement? Iblis. Iblis. Let's go into the history of Iblis. Iblis was so excited because he was an abid of Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa'ala. He was a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa'ala. He worshipped Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa'ala and he was one of the, if not the best, one of the best of the jinns. From amongst the jinn, he was one of the best worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa'ala. Now you think about it. You think about it. Everybody here think about it. You're the, one, you're the best employee at work. You're the best student at school. You're the best at what you do. And subhanAllah, everybody knows it around you that you're the best. Then they pick the second best. How does that feel? Makes you feel pretty, you know, intense, right? Angry, right? And you're like, why did this happen to me? Why did I put in all this effort and I didn't get what I asked for? You want that woman to marry and you don't get it, so somebody else gets it and it makes you angry, right? That anger comes down inside of all of us. Iblis, the same way, became angry. After he found out that Adam was going to be created, that mankind, human nation, was going to start. And this is the Khalifa that Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala was talking about. That the new generation, that the new creation, generation after generation, they will succeed upon each other. So humankind, mankind, has succeeded upon each other since the time of Adam alayhi salam. Being created above the, above, above the skies, above the earth. Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala created him. And the shaitan would look at this body created of clay, created of dirt. And this is this body, the head, the arms, the body, everything is there. And he's walking around and he's going around and slithering around and seeing what is so special about this. And then he comes up with faulty reasoning. He says, I've been created from fire. And this has been created from dirt. Fire is more powerful than dirt. And our scholars of Islam have come up with reason upon reason after reason after reason how the fire is not more uh, powerful than the dirt. When there's a fire, you can even take sand and turn the fire out. Yes? You can take water and turn the fire out, but you can also take sand and dirt and throw it at the fire, and the fire will evaporate, will, st will cease to exist. So his fa reasoning was faulty. So when Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala finally creates Adam alayhi salam, blesses him with his soul, and allows him to stay, he teaches him the language, he does everything that he needs to do, and now he's still alone, and then Hawa, the wife of Adam alayhi salam, is created from his rib, the one that's closest to his heart. They're together, and now they're in Jannah, and they can go anywhere except for this particular tree. Not only cannot they eat from it, they can't even go near it. Don't approach that tree, don't go near that tree, don't do anything. And guess what? At least now, what happens when? Let's go back to the videotape. What happened when? Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala has gathered all the angels and now just think about empty space. Angel upon angels everywhere around you. Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala says, فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ Every one of the angels, they went into sujood, illa iblis. Everybody's in sujood. Everybody. All the angels are in sujood except for iblis. That was his crime because he was angry. He didn't get the leadership position. He didn't get the kursi. We fight for kursi for the masjid. We fight for the kursi of the, of the little colony, the community center. We want to be councilmen. We want to be mayors. We want to be presidents of our organizations. We want to be presidents in our firm. We want to be CEO. We always have this desire for the kursi, for that leadership, for that power. And Iblis didn't get it. It allowed him to get angry. And when he became angry, what did it do to him? He lost his mind. And when he lost his mind, he became arrogant, he became prideful, and he just refused to make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala's command. This is the reason, this is the reason, because this was a test for Iblis. 
and he failed that test. He makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ala. He knows that Rabb, Rabb al-Alameen, he's the Lord of this world and he can do as he wishes and he still refused. He refused and he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ala. Allow me to stay till the end of times and I will misguide as many as I can. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala also, also challenged him and said, you can try, but if we have some people, glory to what you do, they're not going to go your way. Now you have to ask yourself this question. Are you one of those people that is not going to listen to the shaitan? This test of mankind. This test of mankind. So when he was told not to go to the tree, Iblis, shaitan now, confused him. And what did he tell him? He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala is not letting you go near it. And he confuses him and he lies to them. Adam alayhi salam being of the, of the pure nature, he's never heard a lie in his life. So when Iblis, Shaitan, lies to him and says that you become perfect like the angels, and you can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala like the angels, he lies to him. And so then the crime is committed. And then right away, as soon as Adam alayhi salam and his wife realize that they've committed a crime, they both beg for mercy. Rabbana zalamna Ya Rabb, if you don't forgive us, if you don't have mercy on us, rahma upon us, we're going to be losers for the remainder of eternity. So don't us don't let us be losers. You think that that test started it stopped there? No, the test started. Now mankind has been sent to the earth. Meaning Adam alayhi salam and his wife. And they're not even set together, meaning at the same place. One is in this part of the world and the other one is in this part of the world. And it takes them years to find each other. It takes them years to find each other on earth. Test. They have children. They have children. They have twins. Boy, girl. Boy, girl. Each time they had a set. Set of twins. Set of twins. Set of twins. Boy, girl. And they intermarry. In order for creation to start. Now, <coughs> test again. One child, meaning one boy would be extremely beautiful and the other one not so beautiful. The other child, the other set would have a beautiful girl and the boy not so beautiful. And they had to intermarry. And so now Cain and Abel, Qabil and Habil, they have a problem. Qabil has a problem that his wife is not as beautiful. He's got a problem. And what does he do? The first murder on the earth. Test. Constant tests. At this point in time, do you know what the Sharia was? What the religion of Adam alayhi salam at this point was and what he used to remind them of? There was no shirk at this point. Every, the people, Adam alayhi salam and his family, they all worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala. The Sharia at this point in time, the Sharia at this point in time was the confusion that Adam alayhi salam was, that the shaitan that caused to Adam alayhi salam and his wife. They said, be careful with the shaitan. Be careful with the shaitan. He in the shaitan alakum adu, he's indeed an enemy to you. Fatta khiluhu adu, what treat him like an enemy. <coughs> treat him like an enemy. You see everything that you see on TV today, everything you see happening outside now from TV, it's becoming real life. TV has a, TV has an absolute it's an absolute component. Now you need to start thinking about yourselves, and I would honestly tell you that if you're not watching your kids and what they're watching, start learning and what you're watching. Start looking at the shows. Go on to online. It's called Google. You put the show in. What is the show about? What are the characters? What are they doing in there? Learn if you understand. Because the children are going to start accepting everything that's taking place on TVs. And now that's taking place in the real life, they're going to follow those paths of shaitan. Shaitan is extremely powerful, but not as powerful as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala. So let's go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala. His majesty can do whatever he wishes. The one thing that is the most powerful, if you think about when the commands came to the Sahaba Quran, the, the, the Sahaba Quran, the companions of the Prophet, they didn't come down and say, Stop drinking, stop doing this, stop doing that, stop doing that. No, no, no. no. It started with La ilaha illallah, that there's none worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala. And then to have not that confusion that the Christians and Jews had before, <laughs> Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah subhanahu jalla wa ala. So the Prophet sallam, pointing at himself, I'm the messenger of Allah subhanahu jalla wa ala. In no way, by no means, am I Lord himself. So that clarification comes down. Our scholars of Islam takes this tawheed and from this opening, opening chapter, opening chapter of the Quran, if you open up the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala, and you read Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen That all praise Alhamd 
People just say, you know, it's praise. No, no. It's a multiple word and meaning. In the English, if we were trying to translate it perfectly, we can't. So we try to just give it two definitions that we used to say. Praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ta'ala to the Rabbul Alameen, who is the Lord and creator of the entire universes. All of the universes that have been created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ta'ala is the Lord of all of us. He is the creator, the ultimate creator. Now in the world here today, we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ta'ala the creator, and then we have man-made gods. Man-made gods. People make their own faith. Worship this, do this. Even like if you follow these diets now, it's almost like a culture, it's almost like a religion for them. Like vegetarianism or veganism. And you follow some of these people, oh, I can't, I can't touch this. SubhanAllah. And you think about this person who is just doing this for food, for diet, because they want to live longer. That's the only reason they do it. Because they want to have a healthier life in this world. They eat, they follow everything that they eat and drink because they want to live a long life. Who are we? We want them. We want to go as fast as we can from this world so we can go into our next world, the eternal world. That's what we want. So why can't we, when something is presented to us that is haram, and just walk right away? Walk away from it. Walk right away from it. Well, wait, far away. If we know that something is illegal, something is haram, something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala is extremely dislikes, we walk away from it. We run away from it. Is <coughs> one of the things that we should... Oh, to the Lord of the worlds. Did Shaitan, did Shay is Shaitan Muslim? No. Why is he not Muslim? Does he believe in Allah? Of course he believes in Allah, meaning he knows the Rabbul Alameen. He was worshiping him for all those years. He believes in him. If you look at the second verse, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, this is Asma wa Sifat, names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala, that is extremely merciful. That is a person, a, a being, an omnipotent being who is extremely merciful, extremely forgiving. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, different forms of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maliki al Deen, that He is the Lord and owner of the Day of Judgment, and then Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. So the scholars of Islam have come up with a categorization of Tawheed. They say that this is Tawheed al Rububiyya, where we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the true creator. The true creator of everything. And that asma wa sifat, that all the names and attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala, that we understand them, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala, in each of those names and attributes, He's absolutely perfect. There is nothing around Him that is imperfect. And then finally, the thing that Shaytan forgot to do. He forgot to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala told Him to make that sajda, make that prostration, Amongst the angels, he refused to do so for out of pride and arrogance. He sinned. He stopped worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think about see, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the community that he came from, the people that he came from, the people that he came from, they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala, but they believed in something else. So this water bottle is something that would get me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala. They were putting things in the middle that say that this is going to get us closer to this. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala. They again did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala the way He was supposed to be by putting these intermediaries between themselves and the Lord. We have this problem in our communities today where they say such and such sheikh is the one that I'm going to go to, and this sheikh is such a holy person, <coughs> such a saintly person, that this person is going to get me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala. And only Allah knows if this person is going to do. But if you start elevating this person, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that the, the Jews and the Christians they took their priests and their monks and their rabbis and they elevated their statuses to try to see they can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala. But this is not how it works. The way you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala is understanding your religion, understanding the words of the Quran, understanding the speech of Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala. We have all those books sitting on the shelf there. We need to start picking up those books from the shelf, opening up the cover, dust it off, read the Islam. In the first verse, verse, first, first, first verse of the next surah, surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala starts with alif la mean, a miracle. Nobody knows what this means. Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't know what this means. kitab. This is the book. La rayba. There's no doubt in it. Erase those doubts from yourselves, ya khabar islam. These doubts cannot exist. These doubts cannot exist. We have to understand that the doubts that we have um, in, in this book, it's our own self and the shaitan is misleading us. Do you know that when the, the people 
uh, around the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they used to hear the Quran. They used to be mesmerized by the Quranic recitation. And you know what they used to do? They used to put their fingers in their ears and they go and make sounds, make sounds, making sounds, trying to reject the sounds of the Quran. This is what we've done for verbally speaking today. We are putting the fingers in our own ears, not uh, maybe listening to the Quran, but not allowed us to ourselves to understand the Quran. Even the kuffar know, the kuffar across the world know that if you take the Muslim away from the Quran, if you take the Muslim away from that community where they, everybody's gathering together to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ala, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ala, that you're going to take this person away from the community and now you can do whatever you want with him. So a person in our community, na'udhu billah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala protect us and our sons and our children and our daughters and all our wives and, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala protect our communities and our ummah inshallah ta'ala and grow our ummah inshallah but if you do not protect them today, these are one individuals that are going to be susceptible to the whispers of the shaitan and they're going to go outside and they're going to start accepting these things. They're not going to know the, the entire story of Lut and what he had to deal with. They don't understand why a man and woman should marry until you tell them and explain to them. Akhwal Islam might kill the young kids. I tell them all the time, like recently I just told them because I know what's going on. I said, inshallah, right now you're in grade school. Tomorrow, inshallah, in the next year or two, you're going to start middle school. And then you're going to go to high school. And inshallah, we're going to get you through college and you know, just the, the entire educational system, right? Because this is how we live today. We have to go through this education, even though it brings absolutely no benefit except for a piece of paper and a job. The, but we say all this and say once you have an education, you have some type of a decent job, inshallah, find, we're going to find you a righteous woman. And to my daughter, inshallah, we're going to find you a righteous man. These are things that we need to com communicate. We need to talk to our children. We need to constantly communicate this. You communicate this today, you're not going to have a problem tomorrow, inshallah. <coughs> Making dua is not enough. You have to hold the hand and do as well. If Iman was in the hearts only, if Iman was in the hearts only, then salah and zakah things that were of the limbs, people say that we don't have to do anything. If Muslims stop doing anything, then there's no religion. There's no religion. We don't understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is our problem. We don't understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ta if somebody says they only follow the Quran and they're going to reject the Sunnah, the Quran in itself says you must obey the, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala, and then the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to understand these things. And then people who think that we have to just commit jihad. You and what's army? You can't even decide upon what fiqh to follow. We can't even decide what's, who's going to be our leader. We can't even decide who's going to, like, what, how to stand in a straight road. We can't decide these little simple things. When they straighten out the roses, is the most simplest of things. You pick up your pants a little bit. The heels should be on the back of the line. And everybody match up the heels, line is straight. Yet we cannot understand this simple fact. Simple things we're unable to follow. Simple things we're unable to do. And we want to do this major thing. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 13 years. 13 years in Mecca. Constant persecution. And then another year in Medina. And then they were ordered to fight. And you know why they fought, they fought and they battled and why they won? Not because they had not because they had anything. They had Iman. Iman, ya Focus on Iman, focus on Tawheed, focus on why Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala is the one worthy of worship. Focus on these things and inshallah ta'ala you'll see the difference in this community and other communities. When I say this from the Quran and the Sunnah, this is the rule, everybody remember this rule. In order for you to come up with something that is religious and that you want to put, make sure that the people are following it, the person who's coming up with it needs to have the proof for religious purposes. For worldly purposes, the person who's trying to do something worldly, everything in the world is halal, unless you find some evidence that it is haram. This is education, this is understanding. We have to understand these facts and we have to understand the circumstances of our children. We have to understand the circumstances of society. They're hooked onto the phone, they're hooked onto the iPads, they're hooked onto these computers. Even my kids now doing homework on the iPad, it's kind of hard to follow along. And we're like, okay, so when, when, when are we going to do writing and stuff and understanding traditional writing? But it looks like some of these things are going to get eliminated and it starts to make me think, subhanAllah, the end of times are very near. The end of times are coming near now. At the end of times, you don't experience those major times at the end, just know the minor day of judgment is very near. 
The minor day of judgment is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala takes our soul from our bodies, separates them, and lets and somebody's going to throw you in a ditch six feet under. And maybe somebody's going to come and visit you, and maybe it's nobody's going to come visit you. Allah ta'ala alam. But what we need to do is we need to have is this. This conversation, this discussion with our community members, we need to have this conversation with our family members that one day this life comes to an end and then the true life starts. Are you prepared? Are you ready for that? So it starts with Tawheed, Akhwar Islam. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala allow us to understand and implement our faith in our hearts and act upon it every single day of our lives until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala separates us from our souls. وقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر الذين والمسلمات فاستغفر الله <تصفيق> <تصفيق>
the, those activities are things to do. You can do little activities, karate classes. You know, there's you know game night here. Have basketball games. You know, you know, assemble a crew from here and take them outside. You can do so many different things. People have to take charge, especially our young brothers and our young sisters with the sisters, inshallah, take charge and inshallah do this activities for the kill for the children for the community. You'll see it. You'll see a different effect. You know, different effect in the community. Take care of your youth, young person. Take care of your community, inshallah. Take care of the elderly. Take care of our sisters as well. Don't let our sisters stay away from the dean. Take care of every single member of the community. Try to address all the issues our community is having. Try to take care of them. Listen to them at least. And then if you are unable to come up with a solution, talk to me, inshallah. Talk to other imams and shayukh in, the, in, the, in this neighborhood or other neighborhoods and see what they're doing for the people, inshallah. And try to get everybody involved, inshallah. When you get the people involved, when you show them the richness of our tradition, our religion. As you see, now it's Friday night and Saturday is coming about and the Yahud in this community, they're getting ready. I see the kids coming from school already. Buses are coming in and they're driving, they're dropping the kids off and they're getting prepared. And they wear these outfits and they and they can go anywhere and do whatever they want. Why, why can't we? Yeah, because we ourselves are scared to do it. Get rid of your fears. Understand that the only one that you need to fear is, Ya ayyuhal ladhin aman taqullah haqqa tuqatih. The only one that you need to fear is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَمُتُنَّ إِلَّا وَعَمْتُمُونَ And do not die except in the state of Islam. That is the ultimate goal for every single human being. Every single human being. Every single human being. So make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for us in our communities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our Muslim brothers and sisters that are suffering all over the world. Allahumma sura islam wa muslimin. 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 Allahum